Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to copy or load JSON file to the row in the table. So, or we are going to load multiple files. They are JSON files to the SQL table. So here you see that I have a table called you know, maybe test table and I want to create this table with ID and file name and then I want to load the each file in each of the cell. So right, right here, so there would be one row for per file. And uh, that's very common scenario where uh, maybe you are not interested uh, to load this uh, data uh, by using data flow. Maybe data flow is expensive for you and you are looking for alternative uh, solution. Um, so you want to use copy activity and load this file uh, into the table and uh, in the Azure table or SQL table, you know, and from there you might want to write your SQL queries to parse it uh, instead of uh, you want to use flatten uh, transformation in data flow in your uh, data factory. So here uh, I have a couple of files sitting. So I have uh, this blob storage here that uh, I have container input and the input container has the uh, two files. Uh, there's one called armor JSON and the other one is a JSON test. Uh, if you take a look on this one, they are first name, last name, location, children and all that. So this is one file, other one pretty much same file with a little different data. So the other one had the Amir one and Aisha Zad one. The, this one is the, does not have that. You can change if you want. So maybe we can just change to Raza or something else. So no big deal. These are all JSON files. Doesn't matter they're big or small. So we are gonna use them as it is. We are gonna load to the table. Now what we need on the SQL side. So first of all, what we need here, we need our table in which we would like to load the data. So here is my table definition. So I'm creating a table called the beer test and then it has ID that will be auto generated. So identity column. Second, I would like to save the file name. So I want to know from which file this JSON data is. And the third column is a JSON data itself. And I have defined as an worker max. Now I will be creating a store procedure and then using that store procedure to load that information into this table in Azure Data Factory. So first of all, let's go ahead and create this table. Uh, table already exists and I'm going to drop actually the table and store procedure and recreate in front of you. Now I drop the table and I'm dropping the store procedure. Now first of all, we will be creating this table and uh, select the data from the table. It works just fine. It has the uh, three columns. Now let's create our uh, store procedure and uh, what we are going to uh, give a name, we call it a load JSON and uh, here is my file name parameter that will accept a file name and then uh, there is another one called JSON data that will accept our uh, the contents of that file uh, as a parameter and then uh, save into the table. Uh, and then we say as begin this insert in a table and uh, these are the two column for this table for which we would like to insert the values uh, and these are the input parameters of uh, the store procedure. Let's create this uh, store procedure. Store procedure is created and now we are good to go. I will put this uh, code in the description so you can use it there. For the JSON files, I might not put any JSON file. You can use any JSON file, whatever you have, and that should work just fine. Now let's go to the Azure Data Factory and start working. So the very first thing what we need, we need a pipeline. So click right there. And now what we need, we need a metadata activity. Why? Because I would like to get all the list of the file names and then loop through each of them and then load the data to the table. So first of all, I got the get metadata activity here and I'm going to call this one get to file names. So you can see this is going to get us the file names. Click right there, go to setting and here we create a data set new and we know that our files are sitting in the blob storage new and uh, then uh, JSON file are just fine and uh, we can uh, honestly really doesn't matter here but uh, anyways you can select JSON or uh, TXT or whatever we are actually pointing to a container so right there input container and you see that even my JSON file had dot TXT so that is okay because inside data is the JSON um, also, if uh, we want to create another file there, let me do that as well. So if I go right here, I'm going to rename this file and call it a .json. Okay. Sorry. I'm uh, making it actually JSON spellings are J-S-O-N. So N. Yes. And uh, let's call this, uh, uh, give some proper name or something like uh, Tech Brothers 
json okay so there is another file sitting there we are going to use as well let me upload this file so if you notice that we have actually multiple files some of the txt but inside the data is json so don't worry about that because we are just getting the file names here so that's possible you know you have some file there dot json if you are specifically to the uh, those file names uh, i will suggest uh, you know it's okay you can always put more extensions there so only read the json files uh, but in my case i'm gonna be like my files are actually dot txt so this will also open a, a new scenario for you like even you have text files that you would like to read you can read or dot json files so same scenario uh, any document file is sitting there you can read there okay let's not talk too much about it we don't care about uh, schema here and hit ok and if you notice that uh, what we would like to get here with the metadata activity we would like to get the uh, child items so this metadata activity is going to give us a list of all those uh, files i'm going to go ahead and debug so you can see what it is going to return us so, okay it's completed successfully right away and you can see that child items and here is the name of the file and then the file it is file and it is file so these are uh, different file names so you can see it is coming with the .txt and this is coming with the .json but all of them have json data inside now we read the file names what we need to do we need to loop through so we can read the contents so i'm going to use the for each loop here i'm going to connect to my uh, get metadata activity to the for each and uh, here we are going to go to setting in this setting i'm going to go sequential you can do parallel as well but my i don't really uh, have this uh, scenario i have few files and i'm fine uh, loading them in sequence so go to the items here and then click right there and use the get metadata activity here output dot child items so now the azure data factory actually gives you intellisense and if you notice i just type it here dot and it gave me the list of that uh, different uh, uh, next available functions or whatever so now your child items that's what i want to get uh, hit ok and i'm good here i'm gonna click right there in the for each loop inside uh, the pencil icon uh, now i need to get uh, or read uh, the contents of each file um, because for each loop is gonna uh, loop through all those file list uh, so it is okay it's gonna the lookup uh, will be used uh, to read the contents of file uh, so i can call it uh, read file contents okay so that's good go to the settings here and now uh, read first row no i would like to read the entire thing and here i'm going to go to the new and then uh, i will go to the azure blob storage and then here i will go to the json select uh, uh, next here choose the azure blob storage and then point to the our input container and then you can provide a, a none here import schema we are not looking forward into schemas here because we are loading the entire file now here you can uh, hit just ok and then uh, we can go open and from there we can work on this uh, connection manager here uh, what we can do we can go to parameters uh, because each time the file name has to change uh, so i can call it the uh, dset file name and uh, this uh, variable value sorry parameter value will be set from here so i'm telling you uh, this is a a, a connection a data set level connection uh, that uh, is, has a parameter and in the connection use that uh, so i'm going to go right here and uh, map that uh. now once uh, it's done uh, it's uh, i'm going to go to the pipeline and in the pipeline uh, this uh, parameters has appeared uh, so each time as the lookup is inside the for each loop it has to get the file name so i'm going to click right there on the values add dynamic contents for each loop dot name so now it's given me the file name okay so that's good now we have the file name and then it's going to read that next part is what i need to do i need to go and bring the store procedure because the lookup let's actually run this whole thing and see how it works so you go to the pipeline again and the less debug notice here the very first uh, activity is getting the list of the files so we have three files sitting there and then for each loop to start working uh, it tells you like hey i got three files uh, next uh, what's happening uh, inside the for each loop uh, you are seeing the lookup uh, if you see the lookup uh, lookup is reading the entire file contents uh, as a value so see right there that's our first file and they have all the contents so we need to read uh, this value 
okay that's why i was going to use the store procedure and then use that value as the input for my this column right there so that's what i need to put that there so i go back here and then uh, i'm just gonna, i don't need to stop here because it's already stopped so already we know that is the values are there and the we file everything is good now we go inside the for each loop again from the lookup i'm gonna go and bring a store procedure so inside the store procedure if you remember there are two parameters so connect with the lookup and now we go to settings here and here we have to provide the link service so click new and here you will provide your server name so in this case i'm gonna go add your sql database and then select my subscription select my server name select my database name tech browser db and then a username and authentication db user here is my password and test connection and create our uh, link service now here we would like to select our stored procedure load json remember that we have created in our ssms right here so that's a stored procedure it has file name and json data as a parameter let's go back here and now we are going to add those parameters click on new and this is my first parameter i will remove this at the rate sign and then i will go back to my ssms and copy the second parameter name now let's go back here and add as the second parameter now these parameters need some values and values can be coming from a lookup or for each loop so here see we have file name and if you remember that uh, this can be extracted from the for each because for each is uh, getting the list of those all file names and looping through so i will say for each one dot name click ok and next parameter is the actual json data so i'm going to click right there and that is coming from the lookup so lookup and then remember that dot value output dot value that's what we need now a couple of things that to remember if i will just put as it is it's, uh, it might not get me the values so let's, let's see what happened so now let's go ahead and execute our pipeline we are good to go and it should read the data and insert into our table for each of the file so our lookup is completed and now it is a running a store procedure let's go ahead and take a look in the data so select start from the debut test and here you see that uh, that's what i was talking about uh, it is uh, given us a system dot collection dot generic dot list one system dot object uh, instead of giving the actual data so there are a couple of things uh, actually one thing we need to do we need to cancel uh, our uh, pipeline and now we'll make that change go to the 4h loop here on the pencil icon and go to store procedure and then go to the json data so this expression is not giving us the actual data because uh, our input uh, parameter is uh, a string. So we need to convert this thing into the string. Uh, how you do that? Uh, at the rate, S-T-R-I-N-G, and just a small parenthesis around it. Uh, nothing uh, really complicated here. So you will say at the rate string function, and then uh, activity, whatever was there, so leave that as it is. Uh, now you're all good here. Now we should have uh, the correct data in the table. I'm going to go ahead and uh, what I will do, uh, I will show you the data for two or three of the files there. And uh, first of all, I'm going to truncate this table or just leave this set actually as it is. It's going to start with the next uh, anyways ID. So let's go back to the pipeline and here we will debug again. Okay, so it is uh, getting there and uh, now it's uh, loading the data. So one uh, store procedure is executed one time, now second file and third file and all that. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I'm going to go ahead and run my select query again. Now this time it is getting us the correct data because we have changed to the string. See right there, this is the Amir JSON file where we have values Amir1, Shazad2, and then we have some other data. So JSON test file was there where the name was Raza and then another one. There is another file called techresus.json file that has to be uploaded. So let's refresh and see if it is loaded. Finally, that file is loaded as well. So that you can see the data there as well. Now we go back here and see all those activities completed successfully. 
So this is how you will load multiple files from your blob storage. Those, those can be .txt files, whatever the data inside they have, doesn't matter, that can be JSON data or not JSON data that will be loaded to this table. And from there, if you want to run some queries on this JSON data, you can go and parse in a SQL. I thank you for watching my videos. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.